afternoon, everybody. This is the Two Old Farts. My name is Chuck. No, I'm the half-assed part of those Two Old Farts. You went from the better looking to the <laughs> half-assed. How'd that happen? Change it up a little bit. Huh? So you get you by surprise, huh? Catch them guessing. Well, what's going on? Anything new with you? It was a short week at work, thankfully. I was ready for it. I took uh, Friday off after the 4th. So that was nice. Uh, for the 4th of July, um, Brent and I and some friends, we went to go see that new uh, Kevin Costner movie. Okay. What, what the dang thing is called now. Ryzen, I think it's called. Okay. It's a it's a two-part movie, and it's kind of long. It's about two and a half to three hours long. The second part will come out in August, and it's, it's really hard to describe. Because there's a lot of different plot lines going on in the movie. And it seems like they're all converging on this town settlement called Horizon by the river. The San Pedro Valley, which I don't know what state that is. If they told us in the movie, I wasn't quite paying attention. But um, it takes place in around 1862, 1863. So a lot of stuff going on. Uh, the audience skewed from my age up to your age. Okay. So the, young, the, the youngest people there were our friends. So I, I guess, well, one, it was a one o'clock movie. Two, I think it had to do with the fact that there are so many other kid movies out right now that so that the parents are taking the kids to the kid movies. Or, you know, maybe it just isn't getting good word of mouth. I don't know. Um, uh -huh. Westerns, they're, they're a tricky thing. You, you either like them or you don't, and I, I typically like a Western. If it's not a good one, it's okay. I, I'm still happy I saw it, you know? Yeah. What do you, what yeah, do you think? I, I, I'm about to go back and watch some of the old ones, and uh, some of the news that came out, like Pat Oastwood, he kind of, like, changed things up with the Western genre uh, for some of his and, and things like that. So, but I like that. They uh, say the house and just. Cooked some burgers on Fourth of July and had some made my world famous baked beans. Then Friday and Saturday I paid the price. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, I think Brendan and I cooked uh, hamburgers that day as well. Yeah, I, mean, you, I don't know if you remember your cousin Jason, Uncle Ray's son. Yes. Oh, I'd never met him, but yeah, I I, I remember the name. Yeah, we stay in touch, and he actually sent me um, a Fourth of July message and. Yeah, you know, my service and all those kind of things, and and uh, so I'll give a big shout out to him. Uh, hopefully, I, I'm gonna send him a text message this afternoon after we get off, and, and tell him to start checking out our podcast. Uh, I sent him some pictures. Uh, you know, we were just kind of talking, and I sent him a picture of me and him and uh, Granny that were taking when when Ray had passed away and stuff, and uh, so he's. He kind of said something about some more or something. He wished he had more or something like that. So I looked through my my archives and found a whole bunch of other pictures. And so I'm going to reach out to him and maybe send some pictures because he doesn't know anything about of our families and stuff like that. So that's, if he's interested, I'm going to send some stuff out to him. But we stay in touch, uh, holidays and things like that. He's a really nice young man. Last time I talked to him, he was uh, a conductor on a railroad there in, in Columbus. So, but he did a real nice young man. I, I really like Chase, and uh, I want to keep him in the family. Well, he kind of is, isn't he? Do I? I said, well, he kind of is in the family, isn't he? Well, he is. He's, he's, he's in the family. He and, uh, his mother and uh, Ray divorced pretty early in his life. Yeah, and those kind of things. So, but I would give a big old shout out to Jason and reach out to him, get him to start listening to our podcast. Maybe we'll get him on one day. But we can get Chunk Bobby back on maybe next week. Hey, he's he's doing really well. Um, I haven't talked to him today, but I got a text message from him yesterday. He's doing doing good. And, and uh, I think I told you last Sunday when I went by, I saw him. He was looking really good. Uh, that walk around a little bit, so 
some, some, some good things there. That's good. So what have you been up to besides, well, you know, cooking burgers on the 4th of July? Just cooking burgers on the 4th of July and just watching some news on Alabama football. I'm going to tell you, this, it was sad news that Kyrie Jackson passed away a couple of days ago in a car accident. You know, he was a cornerback at Alabama. And, he transferred to Oregon his senior year, and actually he was drafted by the Minnesota Vikings. And uh, so he passed away uh, in a car accident a few days ago. So that's very sad. Yeah. I remember Can, hearing about that. Condolences to his family and and those things. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm I'm excited about some Alabama football. I know people don't want to hear about Alabama football unless you're an Alabama fan, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. I was reading this some some notes here. Watch out, people! He's got notes. I'm telling you, Coach DeVore, I don't know what he's doing, but he's getting the publicity out there. He's got some uh, recruits as um, July eighth. I mean, twentieth, uh, somewhere towards the end of the month. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some ranking changes and stuff like that. Boy, there's a whole bunch of folks here. It looks like they're they're committing to Alabama or. Or they're, they're ranking like Keelan Russell, their four star quarterback, believe that he's going to be ready to a five star. And I, I hear a lot of things about him. So that looks like the quarterback portal is looking pretty good for us. And the running back, there's a uh, AK Deer that's uh, looks like we may get a, get a chance to get him. And he's a four star. And he looks like a five and, and uh, a whole, whole bunch of others. So. Looks like uh, they did it pretty good, uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that. To see what see if all that stuff comes to fruition and get us back into where we always have been. Of course, there's a lot of moves in Texas. and have got a few, and uh, Texas got a couple and stuff like that. So I'm excited for the SEC this year with Texas and Oklahoma joining. It's, it's going to be good. And I think that game we're going to go see is going to be a really good game. Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, we're finishing off the season not really high. As we talked about, it was either in last week or the previous week's episode. You know, the season, it starts off kind of slow, builds up a little bit, kind of dips down for just a, for just a hot minute, and then it slowly starts to build up and build and build and build and build. And it ends with Oklahoma on the road and, in Auburn, so it's thankfully we got Auburn at home this year. Yeah, because you know strange things happen at Jordan Hare. Strange yeah, it, things happen at you, Jordan Hare. You, you got to watch him, folks who who roll toilet paper in a tree. Yeah, yeah, that ain't too <laughs> smart. But that's Auburn. Yeah, and I think I told you a couple of times about your Uncle Gene. It's a long time ago. This is when you were just a little boy. Alabama and Auburn, that's when Bear Bryant was there. They knew how that robber always was, was big. And, of course, Bear Bryant could poke the bear there, too, because he knew that was a big thing, and he knew that the conversation started with a lot of stuff there. And Uncle Gene in his old truck going down to Granny's, this guy pulled up beside him and had an Auburn stick on his truck. <laughs> so they got there. Poking fun at one another, giving each other the fingers and stuff like that. Next thing you know, they pulling guns on each other, driving down the road. Lord have mercy. <laughs> that was Uncle Gene. But uh, those were fun days, I'm going to tell you, because they used to get it on. Boy, was, when you played Auburn, when Bear Bryant was there back in those days, those were fighting days. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. That, was, that, that is a rivalry, good. and it, it's a good rivalry. Yes. It's still a good rivalry, but it, for me, of course, I'm a, I'm a lot older than people who remember those days. Those those were really good games, and you know, and yes, who just had a birthday yesterday? He's the Alabama coach, won a national championship. Oh, then that must be Gene Stallings. There you go. Yes, sir. I've told you, you know, before; he's my second favorite coach. I know. Yeah. So, but, anyway. you know, when it comes to rivalries, you know, there's a lot of in state rivalry football games Texas and AN, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Washington State. 
uh, USC, U UCLA. But when you look at those games, they tend to be one-sided over history. Right. You know, one team is always more predominant over the other, and it's not that way at Alabama-Auburn. Auburn could have a crappy season, two, three wins. But I tell you what, they get up to beat Alabama, and they can, and they have. Oh, there's, uh, there's been a couple of games when we we should have had it in the bag, and they come back. One of that one game was like 25 points or three or four touchdowns. They came back. I don't remember it was back in, back in the days, though. They came back and beat us. Heck, recently, when Cam Newton – played that one year at Auburn. We were up, what, 21, 22, 23, 24 yeah, points the at the half. Yeah. And he put that team on his back and said, we're going to go out there, and by God, they won. That's, that, was an embarrassing, cool. that was an embarrassing loss. Yes, it was. But that's why he played the game. That's what makes it fun. And, and you're right. The, the, uh, one thing I like about this, uh, uh, Texas and Oklahoma coming, I think we're going to see – some Texas A&M robbery again. I think we're going to see some Texas and Oklahoma robbery games again. Well, they, yeah. they've always done that, Dad. That, that, that's the, uh, the the border shootout. They do that over um, when the Texas Fair is going on. They play at the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I'm just... But, yeah, I'm looking forward, like you said, to the Texas and the A&M game coming back. Um yeah, that's going to be a good one. Uh, that, that was a great rivalry, and unfortunately, money talked more than uh, it's than ruining the game college day. football. Yeah, so it, it's it's going to be fun. I, I'm ready for some for some football. Just what about a month and a half? All we got to wait, I guess. <laughs> But some good things coming. We got some little league baseball, and little league softball coming up. So yeah, little league world series coming up next month. Yeah, so that's that's gonna be exciting. It'll be interesting to see if Texas gets back into the world series, especially softball. You know, in, in Georgia, uh, in that area, does pretty good with little league baseball. They get into the world series and stuff like that. Actually, actually, Columbus, if I remember correctly, has a couple championships. Uh, or Macon or Warner Robins, that you know, that area. It's, it's getting to be that time of the year. Yep. Yes, sir, it is. It, yep. You can almost smell the football in the air because yeah. summer practice is coming, not just for college, but for pro. So if you are a fan of football, it's coming, people. Just hang in there. Hang in there. And speaking of football, as they say in the rest of the world, we call it soccer. It was an embarrassing loss last week. USA got got trounced, thrown out of the, the, the Copa Championship. They're calling for the head coach to be fired. He may have been fired. I don't know. I haven't been yeah. keeping up with that since then. Yeah, they were... They were, what, one and one, I think, last time we talked in that, in that uh, championship game? It was a three-way tie, and, and we yeah, lost three-way tie. Yeah, we lost to Panama. Uh, we, we lost to Uruguay. We tied Brazil. Yeah, so I, I, I think he needs to be fired. I, I really do. Yeah, we're going to give some shout-outs to some of your cousins up and out in California for the uh, birthday this weekend. Bridget, right, the last couple of days? Yep, Bridget was, wasn't hers on the 3rd or the 4th? Exactly. What they, I know just a couple of days ago they had one. That, Looking forward to Shannon and Brooke and uh, their kids coming down first part of August to, to visit with us. So that'd be good to see them. You know, Uncle Bobby and I are trying to put together something so we can have it. You know, the families, uh, a big family deal one night before they leave to go back. I'm not sure what their plans are, you know, things like that. But I'm excited to, for them to come down, Shannon and uh, Brooke and, you know, a couple of their kids coming with them. And I'm going to tell you, that Brooke, to me, she looks just like your Aunt Vicky. You think so? Yeah. So, then Shannon looks like her dad. Okay. So, there's, there's going to be some good times. I'm, I'm excited about that. So, so what you when, got? When are they supposed to be coming? Mm -hmm. When are they coming? 
August, first quarter of August, the uh, set that in my phone here. I forgot the date now. August, I'm gonna say 13th, something like that. Shoot, I'm gonna be out of town that week. Uh, August 13th through the uh, 19th. I, I, I won't get back until the 17th. I'll be in San Diego for a, a class. Okay. So what else you got going on? What kind of concerts you got coming up? And um, you and me, the uh, Aaron Lewis. That's the next concert. Yeah, we got that one on the twentieth. Yeah, on the twentieth. Yeah. Um, this week, I'm in a I'm in a class. I'll be teleworking. It's um it's about the three pros: projects, programs, and professionals. It's a um it's a course for uh, civil servants you know, at the, at the higher grades. So I'll be teleworking Tuesday through Thursday, taking that class. And Friday is my, uh, property tax hearing That's downtown protesting my massive increase in property taxes. I'll drink a cup of beers and then cool off where you get downtown because you may need it. Keep that temper under control when you start dealing with all those beer gas. No. And you know, it doesn't pay to lose your temper. Because no, at that at that point they've already ruled, so yeah. there's no, there's nothing your anger is going to change. Yeah, you're you're not going to convince them. So, um, I I don't think they have a case. Um, I've looked at what the comps are in this neighborhood, and I know what they sold at at price per square foot, and that's my argument. So, so that's that's my case. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and then. What's that? You're not going to be like your uncle Gene, go down there with your gun in your truck. <laughs> no, I ain't going to do no good. No, I'm no, just joking because he wouldn't do that either. Then, uh, but, so that's that week. Got a birthday the next weekend. And then the following weekend, you and I will be at the concert. Then the next Saturday, I got tickets to take McKenzie to see the Wolverine versus Deadpool movie. Or Wolverine and Deadpool. Oh, okay. So, Mackenzie and I, we, we've seen all of the, well, both of the Deadpool movies. That's just something that she and I do together. So we're, I got tickets. We're going to go up to the theater in New Braunfels, kind of meet a little halfway. We'll go see that movie. And then the following Friday after that, in the 2nd of August, me, Brenda, and the two friends that we had that concert with in the movie this past week, we're going to go see a, a Guy named Larry Fleet at uh, Stable Hall downtown. Okay. So yeah, not a lot, but a little bit of a lot. Just kind of get through the middle part of the, of the summer there and get ready for the fall. Fall, fall in Texas is like October, November. <laughs> well, by that it, time, football it, season football season will be coming around, so there'll be things to do. Now football season will be halfway by October. We'll have to maybe go check out a couple of Texas State games this year, too. So I, have you had a chance to check on them, see how they're looking? No, I haven't. Um, I tried to get tickets to the baseball game when they played against A&M, but, man, that thing sold out within like a minute or two. Yeah. No, it wasn't A&M. It was UT. Yeah, it was the UT game. Yeah, I was trying to get tickets for us, and it it was like gone. Yeah, I think Texas. I think Texas State's going to be pretty good in football this year too. They got to replace the quarterback, which I thought he did. He came in that one year. He kind of like put him on the map, for name wise. And they had but some I, exciting but, games with him in uh, there. But I, I think that backup quarterback—I don't remember his name—but. What a little bit I saw him play a couple of times. Really good. I think they got they got a good coach, and I think they're going to be pretty good. So, and of course UTSA, I think they're going to be back in the run again. So, yeah, for sure. A lot of a lot of local talent around these local schools. So it's fun to go out and watch you. Yeah, what the game you and I saw was the uh, the Troy versus Texas State, and we were up ahead. And then it just the wheels came off on that one. Yeah, Troy is uh, they've been known to do that. They they can they can be really good and they can be really bad. Troy Troy is like Texas State and UTSA. 
they're just not big enough. You got too much competition with Alabama and Auburn. Detroit, if you look at it, you got Auburn up. Like in the middle of the state, you go down south, you got Troy, and you go back on the other west side of the state, you got Alabama. So Troy's not that far. And then you got Ole Miss coming around that way, and you got Florida, Florida State down. Yeah, so and then you got Georgia not too far across the road over there, and uh, it's, it's it's just like here in Texas, you got a little bit out to the west uh, or east, I guess. And yeah, go north and up. Uh, Hundred miles, you got Texas, and you got all these other. And then Cornet Ward's been been doing pretty good here lately too, as far as recruiting and. Getting well, yeah, there. that's where Texas State stole their coach from. Yeah. So. So UTSA and Texas State play on seventh uh, of September at Texas State. Okay, we may have to go to uh, check that game out. That better be a damn go see. It might be, but I got a concert that night, so. Guess what I do? I always do. So I catch it on TV. Hopefully it'll be on TV somewhere. Yeah, it should be a pretty good season. They start off on the 31st of October against Lamar. Then the next weekend, UTSA. So their first three games are at home. It's Lamar, UTSA, and Arizona State. Then they go on the road against Sam Houston, Troy. Then they come back home against Arkansas State who beat the dog snot out of them last year, like 77 to 33 or something like that. Then they go on the road against Old Dominion. Then they come back against Louisiana. Then they go on the road against Louisiana Monroe. Then they come home with Southern Miss and Georgia State. And then they go out on the road to South Alabama. And Georgia State will be, a, be a probably a pretty good game, too. They, they show up pretty strong every year, too. Yeah, they do. That was one of the first teams that uh, UTSA played in their um, inaugural year, I do believe. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they're quick. That's, that's a lot of those smaller colleges that really do well. It's good to see them start to get out and uh, mix it up with the big boys, so to speak, and uh, get that name recognition. And with this transfer portal deal, which I think has been really good as far as Kids been able to transfer to different schools and play. You know, it's just like the coach at, I mean, the player at uh, Texas State. He was at what, Auburn. And then all of a sudden, he's trying to rehab himself just a little bit. And he's doing pretty good. What else you got? I ain't got much, man. We're we're struggling. We might as well <laughs> call it, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't think I'd be careful of this. This uh, Hurricane Burrow is going to miss us, and I was hoping we get some rain off of it, but it doesn't, doesn't look too hopeful now. I just keep our prayers for all those people on the uh, on the coastline, uh, Corpus Christi, Rockport, Houston area. Keep them safe and not have much damage. You don't Looks think we're like going to get any rain? Hmm? It wasn't like landing tonight somewhere around that Rockport, Corpus Christi, like 1, 2 in the morning, something like that, if I'm not mistaken. And right now it's a category one, but I think once it makes landfall, it's going to downgrade to a tropical, tropical storm, which is yeah, talking about rainfall like six, eight inches in, on that coastline type area, Houston, all that long Rockport, and all that Corpus Christi, and all that area. And so, well, I thought once it hit the Yucatan, it was going to hit, once it came across and hit the Gulf, it was just going to move straight up the Gulf right up in Texas. So I thought maybe it would hit Brownsville and come up that way, but I guess it, it tracked a little more straight than a little left. And then, now, yeah, so like you said, it's going to hit between yeah. Corpus and Houston, I think. What they got now, once it hits uh, that Rockport area, Corpus Christi, it's going to make a, a pretty good turn right and head up that, up that direction. Up right towards Houston. So, anyway, well, we're, Keep our fingers crossed, and, and hopefully we don't have a whole lot of damage. Certainly no injuries. In the Absolutely. Well, I guess we need to wrap this thing up. <laughs> yeah, we're we're struggling. Anyway. All right. I, I, I guess we'll we'll see each other soon. Yeah, and then I'll give a shout-out to Uncle Bobby, and uh, I'm going to reach out to him next week. He's doing good. I didn't want to bother him this week. Uh, let him rest some more and, and get him back on for 
Then I had my friend Andrea, and they did get with her because she's got most of her stuff out of the way now that she was going to be doing this month. It'd be nice to get her on and have her talk about some of the things that her career with the Dobson family and, and with Waterberg and those kind of things. It'd be pretty interesting. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Hit like and subscribe, and we'll be back next week. Y'all take care. We'll be a little bit better prepared. All right. Take care, Dad. Love you. See you. Love you, son. Bye.